you know, back in its day, back in the 40s, 50s, would have been some of the, the choice country in the district until it went saline, so. This is the house that we're currently in. These are the sheds that are just down there. You can see this big massive stand of timber. That's all gone from salinity. Salinity has completely wiped that out. In like say around the 90s, the salinity had really shown up. There was a lot of areas that were completely bare. The, the wind was damaging it more and more. It was no good for sheep feed. It was no good for cropping. It was pretty well useless. We knew we had a big problem with salinity. We were trying to work out how to combat it. We, we were trying to plant a few trees and all that, but the size of our problem was so huge that we realised we, we, we couldn't just plant trees because we, we just would take us forever to cover the area. We got in touch with Ashley Lewis, who was working through Kim Seeds. He said our place would be perfect for direct seeding. So we gave that a shot in 94 and we got some really good results. We probably did another 40 hectares the next year with Ashley. And then after that, we bought our own cedar and we collected our own seed. And from then on, we've just been doing it ourselves. So this is the seed here in these wool packs here. Um, in this one here, we have a river, a river salt bush. The saltbush seed's supposed to go into there, but the saltbush seed's too light, so it won't distribute properly. So instead, we mix the saltbush with the vermiculite and we put it in this main box here, and that just drops out about a cupful on the ground every 1.5 metres. We've probably got 450 to 500 hectares of saltbush in now, and we probably will still do probably another 100 hectares over the next, you know, five or so years. Before we'd say that this, like, dam stayed pretty well full, so the water level has dropped, I'd say, at least a metre and a, to a metre and a half, which is enough to keep everything, like, at bay and, and to let the annuals and that establish it's a lot more productive now. We can just run more sheep than than what we used to before and you know especially at these current prices like sheep's quite a good enterprise. The sheep you know sort of complement the cropping systems too because we can we can get in there we can like run the sheep on them we can get an economic return off it and and still clean clean it up for the cropping system. The good thing about those areas is that it doesn't seem to matter how hard you graze them, unlike a, a normal conventional feedlot, they generally don't blow. So areas like this, they weren't actually seeded. This has just come in like off the stuff that's seeded. Um, so as you can see, there's, there's a lot of the volunteer old man salt bush. If you look closer to the ground, you'll actually see there's a lot of clover germinating in this area. So there will be a reasonable stand of clover here for the sheep at a later date. They come back better after a good hard graze. If we'd done nothing about salinity, I'd, I'd be thinking the house might be in a fair bit of trouble right now. We wouldn't be able to run anywhere near, well, we, we could run the same amount of livestock but we would have to crop a hell of a lot less. We'd be back to sort of cropping 60% of the farm instead of 80% of the farm and we may have actually lost more country to salinity. You're farming for the next generation so you know what am I, I'm, I'm the third generation so my kids will be the fourth generation. You're saving that country um, and you, you're getting a return off country that you like generally returns zero. So 
yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely worthwhile doing.